Now that we have Ashurbanipal and Herman Prime in Rise of Kingdoms, today I'm going to be going over what I think the best open field marches are in the game and how this has changed with the introduction of these two new commanders. And I'm also going to be going in depth with each of these. So if you guys just want a quick answer, you just want to know what the best five marches are or the best three marches are, use the chapters on this video or the timestamps in the description below. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Now, obviously, I think the best place to start here would be talking about running three different armies in the open field i think that is sort of like if you're a free-to-play player that's the place that you want to be you want to get to just having three meta marches in the open field and then start to save up for whatever the next big game changing commander is and just to give you guys a little bit of a spoiler here okay ashurbanipal is not a must-have commander for free-to-play players so we're going to be talking about that later in the video i almost feel like that goes without saying but i'm sure some people were curious but if we're going to talk about the three best pairs in rise of kingdoms right now i think Scipio luce is a great place to start this is arguably the best open field march in the game right now you could put it up there with Nevsky Joan and things like that which while we're here we might as well just drop that in there okay I think these two armies right now in the open field are probably the best open field marches but we also have Zhu Liang with Herman Prime I think if you're gonna run one army of each troop type this is going to be the combination that you do now what I will say is that if you are a free-to-play player and you've already got Boudicca Prime and she is expertise then if you're really low on sculptures you might you might not go for Herman Prime I used Boudicca Prime with Zhuge Liang in my most recent KVK it performed really really well there's nothing wrong with this pair but I think in a video where we talk about the best pairs I think the Boudicca Prime has been replaced by Herman Prime and if for no other reason like let's argue that you know the stats on Boudicca Prime might make your single March perform better I think Herman Prime is not only going to perform as well or better possibly than Boudicca Prime even though maybe he's a little bit squishier he has a 2000 damage factor AoE as opposed to the single target here but the poison stacks on Herman Prime are going to make the rest of your armies and the rest of your commanders perform better and all your allies as well so he's a even more supportive version of Boudicca Prime maybe a little bit more squishy but he has AoE I think right here if you're free to play this is probably where you can stop if you have this you can just stay there you're Gucci Nevsky Joan is tried and true I feel like I don't even have to explain this but the damage factor here is just insane and of course Scipio with Liu Che is kind of the new kid on the block they have both AoE insane AoE damage here this is definitely an army that infantry players can feel really good about finally for the first time in like I would say a year next we can talk about what your fourth army might be and I think running four armies is you know for players who are maybe midway through KVK they're running low on resources or speed ups or something and they can't really run five marches they bump it down to four or if you're a free-to-play player who's been playing for years now and you're extremely active and you have a lot of time to dedicate to the game and you can you can afford to go for that fourth March which again I think for most free-to-play players with the new update to the equipment system with the iconic tiers I think equipment is going to be your bottleneck along with armaments as well and so you know while you could potentially have four commander pairs worth you might still only run three because of the bottlenecks in the rest of the systems but let's just say that you're one a, you're one in a million you're one of those free-to-play players that can run four marches you have four marches worth of equipment I think you run a double calf setup here and and you run the Huo with the William. Okay. This performs maybe 90% as good as Nevsky Joan. And really, it has nothing to do with Nevsky versus Huo. It has everything to do with Joan versus William. Okay. That's really the differentiator here. You could flip those around if you wanted to. It's up to you. Doesn't matter to me. I would say put Joan with whoever has the best equipment on. That's just my two cents. But to me, if you're only going to run four pairs in Rise of Kingdoms, this is the four pairs that I would personally go with. Now let's move on to the best five marches in rise of kingdoms and i actually want to give you guys two different variations here and you can decide what makes the most sense for you the route that you go might depend on what different equipment that you have access to or if you've gotten really lucky with certain armaments maybe you would skew one way versus the other but both of these routes i think are really good and the reason that this splits is because well first of all we are already running two cavalry marches we're not going to be running a 3-1-1 setup here so that means we're either going to be running two infantry marches one archer march and two cavalry marches or one infantry march two archer marches and two cavalry marches so again whichever route you decide it depends on your account specifically I think both routes have a really solid option and way that you can go now that we have Herman Prime and Ashurbanipal in the game but the first thing that I want to go with is 
if you're going to be running two infantry armies okay if you're going to run two infantry armies you're obviously going to split up Liu Che with Scipio Prime and Scipio Prime is going to go back to the Guan Scipio combo and the thing about Guan Scipio I think a lot of people are hating on Guan right now that's insane I think Guan Scipio six to twelve months ago you would say was an S plus March and at this point I would say maybe it's an S minus March like the numbers speak for themselves in this my current KVK my Guan Yu with Scipio in the open field performed about as good as my Nevsky Joan maybe slightly worse but I mean there's just no getting around the fact that this March still performs insanely well so you should not feel bad about running this and personally if I'm gonna be honest with you guys if I were if I'm running five marches I'm running one archer march that's just how it is I'm sorry I'm running this combination here then the question becomes who do you put with your Liu Che I think Gorgo is a great option if and only if you already have Gorgo because you're a garrison player I do not think you should invest in Gorgo for the open field I think she's good right now because she's new and has really good skills but like she will wear down in the open field over time whether or not that's the case for garrison totally a different story obviously she's a great garrison so if you have her already there you go you've got an insanely good combination here personally the pair that I used in my current KVK was Liu Che with Tarek secondary Tarek was 5515 five, five, and this really performed well I was very surprised Tark has insane single target damage he gives a ton of attack boost to your Liu Che who's already hitting like a truck it's a pretty good value investment at 5515 if you get lucky with that configuration or if you have bonus skill right resets just laying around you don't want to do with them maybe you could go for the Tark I personally at this point would not recommend players invest in Tark strictly for open field if you already have him for rallies amazing this is a great combo just like the Liu Che combo with Gorgon like these are both exceptional combinations if you're a rally player you've got the Tarek if you're a garrison player you've got the Gorgo just use whichever one that you have if you are neither of them then we're going to talk about obviously Alexander the Great or you could talk about uh, Sargon I feel like Alexander the Great and Sargon uh, which one is better I'm straying farther and farther away from the Sargon personally that's not to say that he's bad I've just found that being in an A seed kingdom and sometimes we hover close to Imperium I feel like in the fights that I get into I really want to have that instant proc damage I want to have the full blunt force of the skill damage be right away which means Sargon ticks a little bit slow for me his damage over time that's just my experience okay if you're playing up against CC DC kingdoms new players whatever and you can stick to them forever great that's fine so I would say if you got the Alex laying around Liu Che Alex seems to be performing really well for other people so I would recommend going ahead and doing that I'm gonna put the Tarak here because that's personally what I used and since we're talking about only one Archer March here I'm gonna just drop Boudicca here you know if you don't want to invest in the Herman Prime for whatever reason you think he's too squishy or whatever the case might be you could just keep your Boudicca with Yuge Leong you'll be fine with that I personally really think you, you're gonna want Herman Prime the indirect value you're gonna get from his poison stacks and his AoE is just insane now let's say that you want to run two Archer marches okay that means that you're only going to be running a single infantry pair and that means the rest of this just falls to the wayside I think the one best infantry pair is pretty obvious at this point and of course you're going to be splitting up the uh Juge Leong and the Boudicca Prime if you are a rally leader and you have Ashurbanipal I think that's probably the play there is a little bit of nuance here so let me explain I think you need the expertise to use it in the open field that's just how I feel so really like the only people that are going to be running Ashurbanipal in the open field or the only people that should be are players that are rally players like I, I, or unless you're like an, an archer main who just maxes every archer commander then you know whatever but really you, you shouldn't be maxing this commander unless you're a rally lead but if you do then sure you can use him as an open field commander he's going to perform well you kind of look at his at his active skill and that says a lot of what you need to know I mean it's an insane amount of single target damage plus you get the AoE of equivalent to Nebu right which is just like okay that's an open and shut case he's very good outside of alliance territory the march speed is huge here which is why I say pair him with Boudicca you're gonna go a little bit 
faster than you have with your Budoka Juge Leong in the past. And that's going to be really nice. Obviously, you get 20% bonus skill damage, which is a small buff here. And he's a little bit tanky against the normal attack damage, which includes smite damage. So all those Scipio Liuches in the open field, you're going to be a little bit tanky against those with him as well. And of course, the expertise here is just so good. I mean, it's random, yes, but like the buffs that you get here are wild. So if you have him, this is probably the way that I would run two archers. That's just my personal opinion. I feel like the Juge Leong with Herman Prime is just such a great pair. You just leave it alone. I think just let it be. If you don't have the Archer Bonapal because of not being a rally leader, which most of you probably aren't, then you can stick with the tried and true Isong Ye, Artemisia, or you could, of course, go with uh, Nebu. Okay. Now, the thing, uh, you know, Nebu and um, Archer Bonapal feel very similar in my book. I would say Nebu, it, his March speed is not conditional, by the way, which is great. And nothing on his kit requires that he be outside of Alliance territory. So he's very vanilla. You can use him much more comfortably on your own territory, which is nice. That's not something you could say for Archer Bonapal. And he also has 15% March speed, which, you know, I'm talking about March speed a lot here because archers have been really slow lately. Like it feels like they're as slow as infantry, which is kind of sad. And that's also the problem with YSG and Artemisia these days is that like, yes, they can be used as secondaries to Boudicca Prime, but the benefit that Nebu has and the benefit that Asher Bonapal has, at least outside of Alliance territory, is that they move a little bit faster, which is really more important now than ever, in my opinion. If you can't stick to the target, like every turn that you're not hitting something actively, that's a turn you're not getting rage, which is a turn that you're not getting closer to your skill damage, which, you know, we're in a meta now where like DPS is king. So in order to even do any damage at all, you have to be in a fight, right? So a couple of different options here for your second archer pair, uh, which one you go with is going to just depend on the status of your account. The other thing about YSG is that his performance is actually probably going to vary pretty significantly depending on what type of kingdom you're in. If you're in an Imperium kingdom, you probably would rather run the Nebu. Yes, he outputs a little bit less damage, but just the fact that he's going to move around the map faster is going to be way more important to you than the 1700 circle. Okay. It just is what it is. A slow moving glass cannon just doesn't work in, in like high ranking kingdoms. So that's just how that's going to work. I'm not saying YSG is bad. I'm just saying it just depends on the caliber of player you're going up against so anyway i've rambled about this long enough i think you guys get the idea these are the things i would consider for running two archer marches alongside two cav one infantry now if you've been paying attention this entire time i think that the six army lineup is really not going to come as any surprise to you you're just going to run two two and two i think each troop type right now actually has a really good two pair combo that you can run and so we're just going to go back to bringing guan up here with Scipio, and then i'm going to make the same argument as i did before for either running the gorgo if you have her already the Tark if you have them already if not then you would run either the alex or the sargon something like this just makes the most sense to me now if we move on to running seven armies in the open field this is where things start to get very nuanced because we're talking about really high-end players here okay having seven armies means you're buying a ton of crystal tech more than just the pop-up bundles but you're buying the mountain warfares and you have a ton of commanders to run with and you have seven remember guys seven armies worth of fighting worthy equipment blueprints iconic tiers armaments this is like mega whale territory even six armies i think is mega whale territory okay the five army variations that's small spenders me medium spenders right but now we're entering the big leagues and with that being said i have four different slight variations in how you can run a seven army lineup the first thing that you can consider is sort of the same thing that we've been doing for months now which is just bringing out the tried and true zhang yu and then pairing him with either a justinian a honda tadakatsu or a minamoto now the sole purpose of this army is just a seventh army that will rapid fire massive damage and apply the 30 percent defense reduction from zhang yu his skill cycle is incredibly fast and we, when you pair him with somebody like justinian who pumps out 2500 single target damage or even the single target damage from Minamoto is nice yes it's a little bit lower but the fourth skill on Minamoto is going to make the target take 30 percent more damage and when you're talking about 30 percent more damage coming from these other six armies like you are going to absolutely pop that target so a little bit of a trade-off here I know a lot of players love the Justinian I can see why also again Honda tried and true here you're just pumping out that that AoE you might as well use them these are all great choices to run if instead of three cavalry you want 
want to run three archers I think that you can actually pull that off as well I think in that case you would actually split up the Juge Leong with the Herman Prime and then for Herman Prime you can either pair him with Tamiris which I hate this idea personally I don't like it but we're gonna have to see how archer players play this I think if you're gonna run three archer marches this probably makes the most sense because then you can take your Nebu put him with your Zhuge Liang and this kind of balances out the March speed a little bit between the different armies the other thing that you could consider would be to keep Tamiris on the bench where I mean I really don't again this is my opinion I don't want to see anyone remove poison ever I think it just provides such an insane value over time if you go ahead and do that then you would probably run the Ashurbanipal with the Herman Prime then you would obviously run the one of these armies up here this is also where you you could consider switching out like the Henry moving something like this around it really just depends uh, I'm gonna be honest with you how you split up these different pairs is up to you again the Artemisia and YSG I think are still insanely good choices they're just very slow these days and so that's why they're not the the first thing that comes to the top of my mind right now if you're doing this you probably would want the Henry to be expertise as well just keep that in mind I think his expertise is really nice in the open field but I would say these are the different choices that you have if you want to run three different uh archer marches personally if I had to pick I would rather go the route of three calves two archers two infantry rather than going three archers two cav two infantry that's just my opinion of course if you want to run three infantry marches in the open field well that opens up the gate for a couple of different choices now in this case you will split up the guan with Scipio and your guan army is probably going to be your worst performing army if I'm going to be just completely blunt with you guys I think that the guan would have to be paired either with Alex or with Sargon if you're going to go this route and if you are going to go that route then your Tark probably goes with your Scipio but you do have a couple other options you could put the Trajan with your Scipio instead I think this is a combo that I believe Chiskel talks about quite a bit I haven't shown Trajan that much love in this video I think he can still fit into a seven March lineup and we're going to talk about that a little more in a second I prefer the Tarek here than the Trajan if your account has kind of been built around Trajan fitting in there somewhere then I, you can obviously make the argument for that and then of course Honda or Mehmed could fit in here as well I think you could slap pretty much either of these behind your Scipio um I like the fact that the stats are great the synergy is great with Mehmed but the March speed on Honda is great the massive spike in attack percentage that you're going to give to your CPO here is great as well he's obviously nice AoE there's a lot to love about this combo as well so I'll leave it up to you guys what you think is the best option for this but I think Gorgo with uh, Liu Che is kind of inevitable if you're going to split up three different infantry marches this is probably the one that I would recommend the least which is why I save it for third of three so first being three different cavalry armies two infantry, two archer, second place being three archer marches, two cavalry, two infantry, and then third place being three infantry, two cavalry, two archers. And then I saved this one for last, but you could still just drop your Trajan into the seven slot here and put an Ethel fled or whatever you want behind him and just have a seventh army with just being a supportive army. The thing about Trajan, now that we have Herman prime in the game is that as Herman prime adds poison stacks to the targets, it's going to increase the skill damage that they take, which means that the bonus to skill damage dealt for Trajan feels like it's more impactful now which is nice but also boy am I feeling like this is an old March guys I'm feeling I'm not I'm not super confident in this one uh if you got the you know legendary gear for this and armaments and all that stuff and you can make it work then dude make it work that's great I definitely don't think that you could say Trajan is completely dead at this point but with each power crept commander that comes into the game I do feel like he takes a slight hit to his relevance even though he is a supportive commander by nature and kind of amplifies everyone around him it's like like, would you rather that or would you rather just have like another march that just hits really hard Trajan as an open field leadership commander is something that you kind of have to build around for your account and I don't know if a lot of people have and I also don't know if a lot of people should start to do that now of all place of all times right but I did want to mention this as a lineup that you could definitely go ahead and do now if you want to strip away all of the nuance and everything that we've talked about in this video 
with and you put a gun to my head and said omni i have unlimited sculptures and unlimited bl blueprints and unlimited everything just tell me what the seven best armies are for the open field i would probably point you in this direction and just say max everything you see on the screen here and you'll be gucci i think the number of people watching this video that that applies to is almost zero and if it does apply to you you probably already know this but i just because of the title of the video i wanted to at least you know fulfill my obligations of giving you exactly this seven best armies so there you go anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of the video hopefully you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there let me know what you think in the comments section below what do you think the best three five seven armies are in rise of kingdoms i know a lot of people are probably going to argue about this in the comment section below but please let's keep it civil down there okay and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace